welcome back to the next update for the RC Hypercar. As you can see, I'm starting some initial testing, at least with a partially completed monocoque. Based on the last video, I had a lot of requests to see how the monocoque itself was actually designed. Um, I'll add my usual caveat that I'm not an expert in any way in this, and a lot of this I actually learned along the way of designing this car. So a monocoque or stress skin is a structure where the shell of the body provides the strength that resists all the forces acting on the car. This means everything in the car either mounts to or is housed inside this monocoque. Uh, because the monocoque is integral to all of these different components, I found the design of the monocoque needed to be very flexible. Any changes to the suspension, aerodynamics, body, or internal components of the car ended up affecting the monocoque. So it's best to have a really solid design and label everything so that you can make sure that uh, you can go back and edit it later. So 3D printed monocoques are a bit unique in that the materials they're made of are non-isotropic, meaning at the layer lines of the 3D print, the shell is gonna be much weaker, so the design has to account for this. Since the monocoque is structural, let's start off by discussing the actual forces acting on the monocoque itself. The biggest force acting on the monocoque is a bending stress, primarily in the downward direction caused by the weight of the components housed in the monocoque as well as the forces from the suspension pushing up on the monocoque. The rule of thumb I've always been told when designing a monocoque structure is to have as much material as possible aligned in the direction of the stress. So this means in a purely bending situation, the strongest monocoque skin profile is actually a square tube. You have walls on the sides that are directly in line with the bending stress. This gives you the most strength possible just from the skin of the structure. The bottom of the monocoque will experience the most stress, particularly on a 3D printed part, because the skin will actually be pulled in tension. Um, it'll actually need to be thicker so that it doesn't separate at the layer lines. Uh, the top of the monocoque is actually under compression and can be made quite a bit thinner. If you look at my RC Streamliner monocoque, it's basically a square with a thick bathtub portion at the bottom handling the bending stress. I also want to point out the Streamliner is very narrow and its wheels are actually inside the monocoque structure itself. So it can be a purely square profile like this because it has very little torsional or twisting stress. But the hypercar has a wheelbase that's much wider than the monocoque and it'll be taking hard turns which puts a lot more torsional stress through the monocoque. So what shape can take the most torsional load? Again, aligning the material to the stress as a circular tube is the most efficient shape for handling torsional stress. So this is why things like sway bars and torsion springs are typically made from circular tubes. Since the monocoque needs to be strong in both bending and torsion, uh, we need a shape that kind of presents a compromise, and that's typically an octagon profile. Uh, it's a little bit square and a little bit round, and by tweaking the ratio of squareness to roundness, we can tweak the uh, bending versus torsional strength characteristics of the monocoque. So let's look at the hypercar's monocoque. The overall shape is driven almost exclusively by packaging and aerodynamics. The monocoque at the front is as narrow as possible to allow the most airflow extraction from the front wing while still having enough room to mount the front suspension components. The rear is as narrow as possible to allow as large of a diffuser outlet as possible. The middle of the monocoque is for housing the actual guts of the car. Initially I made this as tight as possible and it was actually a real nightmare to fit all the components inside the car and try to assemble it. I've since learned from CFD tests that having a wider monocoque in the middle actually helped manage the airflow so later designs are actually going to be much larger than this particular monocoque. I did play a lot with rough sketches and design bodies to represent all the internal components so I could play with the packaging. I started off with a side profile, the monocoque that roughly fits the components. I then added ribs along the side of the profile that help define the key parts of the monocoque's profile along its length where it needs to constrain its shape. Then I began to design the mounting points for all of the components. This took a lot of time. Again, because I was packaging things like rockers and their mounts, I had to create additional ribs to further constrain the monocoque around those components and give sufficient space so that they could move through their entire range of motion. It seems like a really daunting job, um, but it's really just a step-by-step -step thing where I lofted a surface over the ribs, looked at it, moved the suspension around, and tried to determine where I needed more or less control of the shape. 
So I want to point out a couple of unique features of the monocoque. The first is we have a longitudinal rib structure that runs the entire length of the bottom of the monocoque. This serves a few different purposes. First, it actually stiffens and strengthens the most stressed portion of the monocoque. This is very important given that it's a 3D print. And again, I'm trying to add more layers so that uh, the 3D print can't separate there. Uh, secondly, it allows the heaviest component of the RC car, the battery, to sit as low as possible in the chassis and as close to the center of the chassis as possible, which just uh, lowers the polar moments on the chassis so that it can rotate easier. And then lastly, the rib provides a thicker portion of the monocoque on which to design the mounts for the suspension and the rockers. If I didn't have the rib, I'd have to go ahead and thicken the monocoque in different areas and make elaborate structures that get added enough strength to add those mounts for the suspension components. So the next unique feature of the monocoque is the actual canopy opening here. There's no requirement that this actually look like an actual car, but I did need to access and install all of the internals and components and electronics. So I decided to make it look cool. Cutting a hole in the monocoque is actually kind of bad since it's our structure. So I have to add a thicker profile all the way around that opening for the canopy to reinforce the shell so that it doesn't uh, separate or collapse on itself at that point. I then printed out some test pieces and realized this wasn't going to be strong enough actually for the monocoque and a happy coincidence just happened to occur. So the monocoque is about 450 millimeters long, uh, larger than my 3D printer can print in a single go. So I needed to split it in half. So I split it actually just behind the canopy opening and added a plug or a joiner that will be used to strengthen the glue joint between the two halves of the monocoque as I glue it together. I added some additional structure to this joiner section with some triangulation and this vastly increased the stiffness of the monocoque. Then later on I was having a real hard time packaging the rear shock absorbers and putting them into a place that I could easily access them and install them. And then I came up with the idea to actually integrate the mount for the shock absorber into the structure I had added to the joiner as well. So it really serves three purposes. I've also added a bulkhead structure here to the front of the monocoque that allows for the mounting of the car's nose. Um, I directly copied this from existing race car designs. I made it large enough so that it actually touches some of the mounting points for the suspension and this just adds additional strength throughout the entire front end. And then I added one more strengthening rib back by the servo here and a couple of little ribs around the servo as I found with this actual particular version that I'm going to be testing of the hypercar monocoque that the mounting structure for the servo itself uh, was not strong enough when I was actually twisting the shell of the monocoque a small amount and so I want that to be really strong as we start to add downforce. The suspension mounts were fairly straightforward, uh, but it just required a lot of playing with the design. Everywhere there's a hole in the monocoque for either a suspension arm or for cooling, I had to thicken the area around the edge of the hole to add additional strength uh, because the 3D prints, when they're only a single layer thick, will easily crack at that point. Oh, a really important part of the monocoque design that I learned from my streamliner design is I added a hole in the monocoque above every screw so that I could actually get a tool inside from the outside to actually install the suspension. The holes are very small, so they're really not of consequence to the structure or the aerodynamics of the car. So let's move on to the actual exciting part, uh, building up a working test car. This initial monocoque was not meant to be run as a car. It was just a fitment and strength test monocoque. But as I got into it, I was like, man, I really need to get this thing out there and running and see if there's gonna be any other issues I'm going to find. It was hacked up pretty good with uh, manual modifications and it didn't have all of the provisions for mounting the steering servo or the shock absorbers. I also had to combine two different versions of the suspension because of changes in the monocoque. So one side's actually a little bit narrower than the other side and I ended up in my first test session to actually have four degrees of toe-in on the rear suspension. Not ideal, but nonetheless, I knew that running the car would be a great learning exercise. So I drilled some holes, zip tied in a servo, and did my best to stuff everything into the far too small of monocoque. It took me over an hour to just assemble the rear suspension, which is completely unnecessary. I just gave myself more space so that in the future, this will be a lot easier task. 
So just caveats here for the first run, I didn't even have the tires glued onto the rims yet because I wasn't sure they were going to work out. The motors are not using any kind of torque factoring. And in fact, uh, even though I have the hall sensors mounted, I'm not using the sensored ESCs yet. I just have a Y cable that splits the signal between the two ESCs, which effectively means I have no rear differential. I also have no roll springs or dampers installed. This car is entirely running on the heave springs, which are between the rockers and the flexor joints themselves in the control arms. So the first test went really well. The motors didn't overheat at all, which was something I was very concerned about and something that happens a lot in my streamliner. I did choose a slightly lower KV motor for this and I'm only running this at 3S. The steering was excellent and actually I had a lot more steering range than I thought I would have. The handling was difficult given the lack of differential and dampening. The power is just excessive. I can barely use 20% throttle. I'm spinning the tires all the time. Uh, the car only weighs uh, one kilogram with everything in it. So it's pretty light and twitchy and really spun very easily as all the mass is so tight to the center of the car. So things were actually going so well that I decided to test the flexor joint strength. And in the parking lot, uh, where I was testing, there was a bicycle jump, and I took that car off the jump uh, half a dozen times. The monocoque held up great, no issues there at all, but on the last jump, I caught a wheel and did a cartwheel and ended up breaking one of the rear flexor joints. It was really because the car had no bump stops and there was no shock absorbers installed, which just allowed the wheel to bend at like a 90 degree angle to the entire car and snap the flexor joint. So I read up a bit more on flexure design anyways, and I actually made the flexure joints thinner and wider, which should help make them stronger and more flexible. I then added a little bit of some bump stops on the rockers themselves and the suspension so that they can't overextend. And then the coup de gras was that I printed them out of carbon fiber reinforced polycarbonate. Testing these in my hands, I'm pretty confident other parts of the car will fail before the control arms do. I took the car back out for a second test session and the car was really much better handling with the new suspension. And I fixed the rear toe issues as well when I redesigned and reprinted the suspension. It does spin really well uh, with all of its mass at the center of the car. Uh, I ran the car into some curbs on accident and even flipped it once and nothing broke. It does need torque vectoring very badly, but the only issue I found was that the parking lot I was using had some tiny magnetic stones that would get pulled into the motors and lock the entire motor up. So I need to come back and design some sort of guard that still allows for airflow around the motor, but blocks some of these little stones from being able to come in as easily. I did learn there's a couple of areas I will the monocoque I do want to just strengthen. It's probably complete overkill. Honestly, I might try to thin the monocoque out and go from 0.8 millimeter shell down to a 0.4 millimeter shell. As I've started some test prints with all of the aero devices and everything on this, this car has gotten much larger and heavier than I had wanted. And I'd like to play with cutting as much weight as possible, but I think that's gonna be something I try after aero testing. That's really gonna wrap it up for this video. I really want to focus on the aerodynamics of the car. In the next video, I'll go through kind of my design philosophy and the CSV analysis of the monocoque itself. I don't know if I'll actually get into actually being able to test the entire car with all of its components and parts and pieces yet. Uh, that'll probably be the video after that. Again, feel free to leave any suggestions or questions you have in the comments down below. And uh, thanks for watching.